What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Human Being Voice. Today, we got a very special guest. You know, we got a Will Cornell's very own NYU alum, world renowned, super duper amazing doctor, uh, Dr. Jess. How you doing? Thank you for joining us. Wow. Thank you for having me. I'm really thrilled to be in conversation with you. Thank oh, you. Amazing mom. Amazing mom. Amazing wife as well. Got to add in there, you know, shout out to law. <laughs> yeah, the, the mom hat is new for me, so I appreciate it. It's still sometimes it blows my mind. I'm like, I have a little person I'm responsible for, but it's right. been amazing. Yeah. It's not there yet, but you know, I just been watching everybody do their thing. So when the time comes, I already know what to do and what to expect. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so let's get into it. Um talk about actually let's talk about who you are first and let the people know the work you do. Yeah, so I, um, my name is Dr. Jessica Clements. I'm a board certified psychiatrist, which essentially means I, I went to med school and I'm the type of uh, mental health specialist, provider, doctor that prescribes medication. So I know sometimes people like they try to, they may get confused on like, what's a psychologist or a psychiatrist? So psychiatrist is a type of doctor that prescribes medication for mental illness. Um, I use social media a lot because Omar, it's been so important for people to see that conversations about mental health need to happen in everyday life. Um, people need to know where to get help. They need to know it's okay to get help. So I've used social media in that way. And that's how people know me as Dr. Jess, but I'm a real doctor. I see patients all day. And even in the pandemic, my, my visits have actually like increased. More people are keeping visits. It's, it's really been a time where people are engaging a lot with mental health treatment. So that's a little who I am. Um, yeah. Real doctor, and just in fact, before this call, she's just on another video with one of her patients. So, you know, if you need to see her, you know, we'll share the information later today, well, later after this uh, conversation. So, but um, knowing their expertise with like, mental health, talk about the impact mental health has within like the Black community. Talking about, you know, from like slavery days leading up to uh, today. Absolutely. So there is a, um, a social worker who has like a PhD. So she's a doctor, um, Dr. Joy DeGruy, who talks about post-traumatic slavery syndrome. And she's done a lot of work on it. So this is not information that, you know, is coming from me in my work, but um, in her research, where she looks at the relationship that people have with things in their everyday life that you might not realize stems back to that trauma that many black folks have experienced no matter like where you have grown up like that lineage not us directly but the lineage right and so an example that she uses is um you know sometimes we might be hyper vigilant and because i'm a black person too so i'm hyper vigilant um in general but there might be this hyper vigilance where you're aware of your surroundings you know that radar might might go up if you see a certain you know situation that is for, for the example she gives is that can go back to behavior that was passed down in slavery. So like if you take a family that sees um, the father, you know, getting pulled away and, you know, beaten and, 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 and that, that behavior is then the family starts to protect itself, you know, son, be careful when you go out because they saw what happened. So then it just gets passed down from generation to generation, be careful when you go out, right? And so what, what Dr. Joy DeGruy is pointing out there is that some of these behaviors that might be typical for Black folks, hypervigilance, um, sometimes just a sense of like being aware of what's going on, that is actually going back to what's been passed down from the trauma of slavery. Um, say that again? Like your guard up in general? Yes, having your guard up, knowing like, just being aware, you know, I use an example of like, Black folks run before we see what's happened, right? Like we, if you're in an environment and something pops off, you run, like you get to where you're going and you say, why are we running? I don't know, this is what happened, right? There's this sense of just being very acutely aware of the environment and potential for danger, right? right? So that's an example. And then if we kind of think about just, um, you know, what's happening in the world with like, police brutality, seeing the videos. There are studies that sh have shown that that re-exposure can cause people to have poor mental health days. Mm -hmm. And so poor mental health days can mean you're not showing up for work as fully prepared as you normally would be. You're missing um, you know, important activities with your family. 
you're not sleeping well, your mood is low from just simply watching those videos getting re-traumatized. Um, so that's a big thing that we're experiencing. I was just about to mention that too, because even for me, I feel like it gets exhausting seeing like the police brutality videos, at least for me mentally over and over and over again. When like one's like one happens and then it just seems like no one happens that a couple of days later and then no one happens a couple of days later and you see it circulating through social media. So I can only imagine that's happening to me. And I feel like I'm pretty mentally strong, like what that happens, like how that can happen to other people. Absolutely. I mean, I think if people should be prepared to take breaks mm -hmm. from watching it, you know, I myself have gotten to a point where, you know, I'm aware of what's happening. I certainly know the names, I say their names, but I, 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 I don't watch those videos because I know it's, it's traumatizing to watch. Um, and so I think I would, you know, it, it, like you said, it's, it, it's almost, it's constant. And so that re-exposure can affect our mental health. Um, and so it's important to just be thoughtful about what you're taking in. Don't take everything in just because it's, you know, out there. Right. And then what are some ways you, or techniques you use to help, let's say your patients or yourself with like your own mental health, whether it's like stress balls or reading like literature, gin, things like that to really just unwind and relax. Absolutely. I think about mental health in this way. So it's it's not the absence of mental illness, mm -hmm. right? Mental health is going to encompass how your mood is. So are you feeling level most days? Or are you feeling really down? It's gonna also incorporate how your emotional stability is, right? Are you lashing out at folks? Are you crying? Or are you generally feeling okay, not feeling too low, your mood is stable? And then how well you're interacting with your world. Like, are you in, you know, harmony with your friends and family, your partner, your loved ones, significant other, whatever? Are you in harmony with your work? That's going to really encompass mental health. The additional thing I'll say about that too is it's it's a process that you have to actively work on, right? Your life changes, like I'm a new mom now. So that's something else I got to prepare myself for. It's going to make it harder for me to keep my emotions level if I haven't slept well because my baby's up. So it's, a, it's an active process. So what I tell people is you got to prioritize wellness, which means make sure you are prioritizing getting enough sleep, especially if you know if you're not sleeping well, that that means your stress level is higher, you're snapping at folks, you're not performing well, make sure you're exercising. Moderate exercise can treat mild depression, mild and moderate depression. Exercise can do that. Make sure that you're eating well, like think about what you're taking in into your body, right? Eating green leafy vegetables can be really helpful to, to help keep your mood level. Make sure that you, you know, are not eating a lot of processed foods, even though you might want that when you're feeling, you know, like the carbs and stuff. But um, I, I keep it really simple. So eat right, sleep right, exercise. And then mindfulness, like take a moment every day it can be journaling, it can be say, simply saying a mantra, it can be five minutes where you just go out in nature, where you just try to be in the here and now. You're saying, forget the cell phone, forget the deadlines. Like, I'm just going to focus on being in this moment for a few minutes every day. Oh, and you being a doctor, I can only imagine the amount of books you've read, let's just like in your lifetime. So what are some books people could read to, you know, help inform themselves of, you know, just like, mental health and even just like that mental health of like black people and what happens like when we go through things and why it's Absolutely. so much different for us than it is for like other groups of people. Absolutely. Um, I really love Charlemagne's book, um, Shook Ones, mm -hmm. especially for black folks, black men um, who are like on the fringes of mental health. So that means like, I mean, they're not quite ready to get into treatment. Um, his book, what I love about it is he shares his experience. It's funny, but also every chapter, um, there's a doctor, a psychiatrist who breaks down clinically what's happened. Yeah. So I think that's a really good book. It also talks about therapy. So that's a great resource. Um, if anyone has experienced trauma, picking up Dr. Joy DeGruy's book, um, uh, post-traumatic slavery syndrome can just be really educational. It can be like, dang, that's why I do that. You know, that's why I'm, I'm, I have that behavior. That's not mine. I'm going to put it down. Um, also, The Body Keeps the Score. I cannot remember the author's name, but that's the title. 
that book is going to be really good for anyone who's experienced any type of trauma so that they can understand why, even though mentally they might be in a different space, but their body is still holding that trauma. Right. Um, the last book I'll mention though, is a book that um, recently um, was released by a, a colleague of mine called Eat to Beat Depression and Anxiety. It's by Dr. Drew Ramsey. Um, and that can be really interesting for folks who are like, I'm not ready for medication, but I could change the way I eat. And so he's a nutritional psychiatrist. And so he breaks down in that book, the types of foods to eat and how it's affordable. And I think it's really great. I've picked it up and I use it to also rethink about the kitchen and how I can you know, think about what I'm eating and what I'm putting into my body and how it can affect our health. Yeah, yeah definitely. Because you know, your body's a temple. So you definitely want to be mindful of what you put inside of it. So yeah. yeah. And um, I believe May is Mental Health Awareness Month, right? Cool. Yep. So talk about the significance of this month and what it means for people who are really going through it or just kind of like on the fringe of do I want to go see somebody or not? Yeah, it's all about awareness. I think um, this month is a great opportunity for people to like tune in. Social media is like accessible. There's so many different platforms. So, you know, if you're thinking about mental health, take that as a cue to like tune in, lock in. Um, you know, there's lots of talks people will be doing. Um, also, it could be a chance to say, maybe today I'll call someone, a therapist and see about getting into treatment. Um, I think a lot of therapists will be doing that as well, um, like making themselves available. Um, but yeah, I just think it's a great way for everyone to make this a part of their awareness Mm -hmm. um, starting conversations in their home. That's a lot of what I try to do, making a safe space, make it cool to talk about mental health. Um, so I hope that people will also like just check in. You can simply ask people like, how are you really doing? And just listen and start the conversations. Definitely. And lastly, can you talk about the work that uh, I believe the organization is called Son of a Saint. Talk about the work they do and why people should be aware of them. Yeah. So Son of Saints, um, I actually learned about this organization through my husband, through law, um, he's from New Orleans. And what I like about the organization is it, it really centers young black boys. Um, and I think that that is a group that we really do need to uplift and support amongst all groups, but I, I'm a mom to a son. So I'm you know really thinking about holding space for black boys. So it's an organization that really centers fatherless um, boys who are at risk. Yeah. Um, and they just completely wrap around them up until age 18, but it even goes further to like age 21. So they have recreational activities they will do. They get paired with a mentor. They're really focusing on those kids who are at risk. So those who even their GPA is a little bit lower, like 2.5. So they're really trying to help get these kids onto a better course and show them, you know, good role models. What I also love is that they also engage with mental health, right? Because that's a lot to go through. And so it's, it's, it's important to make sure the grades are right and that they have all the activities and the cool photo ops. But at the end of the day, um, it's also important that these, these children are being um, supported in terms of their mental health because they also have to process not having fathers in their lives and just the challenges with that. So it's a great organization. Um, they're doing a lot of incredible work. So I'm really honored to like highlight them too. Son of Saints. Cool. Yeah. That sounds like doing amazing work. Um, and us at JD Sports and Finish Line, you know, the series of community voices started last year at like the high of all the social unrest. And the first episode was on Juneteenth and, you know, really elevating voices like yourself and supporting these organizations doing work within the Black community. So that said, we want to make a donation of $10,000 to Son of, Son of the Saint on your behalf, knowing that uh, those dollars will go to great use, especially for kids who are in great need. So they, you know, I'm sure that when this episode drops, they'll be super excited to hear about the donation. And yeah, thank you. Thank That's you. Cool. That's exciting. I'm really, I know they'll appreciate that. Thank you so much for, for doing that. That's going to be, I think it's going to go a long way. Absolutely. Yeah. And shout out to Kelly Bowden as well, because she suggested um, we speak with you. And then I was like, yeah, why? like that makes perfect sense. So then, you know. Thank you for her and Law and yourself. And yeah, I mean, that's about it. You know, I'll let you have the closing remarks. Got anything coming out, a book, you know, um, yeah. 
whatever you want. I will. Thank you too. Yeah, I appreciate Kelly Rowland for shouting me out. I really I appreciate how people are really just like championing voices like mine. I really I am grateful. I'm grateful to you for giving me the opportunity to also talk about mental health. Um, you know, for for the upcoming May month. Um, but yeah, I just I will soon have um, an Audible original, so that'll be coming out really really soon. Um, and so I'm going to be kind of working through that. So I do hope people will um, kind of stay in tune with me. It's going to be an opportunity for people to learn like the beginning parts if they're on the fringes of mental health, like what the process is like and through my own voice. Um, so people can follow me on Instagram, ask Dr. Jess. Um, and I always tell people that, you know, they, no matter what people have gone through, I want people to know you are not your pain, you are in love and that you have access to it. And that, you know, it's all about doing the work to get back to who you are. Um, and it can be done through therapy. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And people got to take care of their brain. You know, it's the most important well, organ in your body. So as long as your brain is good, that's one of those things you got to make sure it's A-OK 100%. So cool. And that's a wrap. Thank you again, Dr. Jess, for joining us. Super special episode. And I'm sure everyone's going to love it and love your words and everything that you do. So thank you so much. Thank you for having me. No problem.